Hello, we've got a special treat for you today. Lori Hedges here has gone to Havana and she's had an amazing trip. She's here and going to tell us all about it. Now, where did you actually get to go, Lori? Um, well, in April, my son and I um, flew down to Havana, Cuba. Right. And um, we went pretty much directly there. We didn't... You didn't I mean, get to tourist anything in, in between here and there. No, no, no. Oh, my goodness. Did, did you end up staying in a hotel, or did you stay with somebody? No. Um, our trip, we wanted it to be uh, more an authentic um, experience, so we didn't book a hotel. Besides, hotels are kind of expensive. It would right. have made it a lot uh, higher right. for us to be there. And we were there for 10 days, so we needed it to be inexpensive. Um, so we went through a company called Homestay. Yes. Um, it's an Irish company, but it's kind of like Airbnb. And we booked um, our room uh, with a family. So we actually lived with a family. Um, we had a private room and a private bath. But it's, that's neat, though. But you get yeah. to know more about the culture if you're with a exactly. family instead exactly. of being in the tourist part of it. So you had a good time with them then? Yeah, um, it was funny because um, Yenne, our hostess, told us that uh, she loves to have Americans come because they are more interactive with her family. And oh, uh, she says sometimes, nothing against Europeans, but she says sometimes they're more just, they just stay there and they use it as a, a base, you know, right. but they're gone and they, they don't talk to them much. Um, but we were really talkative I mean and you're more talkative than most Americans so they were really <laughs> yeah they got, they well, got a and good I taste of it I speak a little Spanish mm -hmm. and I think when you go to a culture um, and you try to speak their language even if you butcher it they appreciate the fact that you're they making do. that effort yeah so um, my Spanish vastly improved in 10 days from <laughs> Because I had to think, I, it got to the point where um, I would be texting my sister, because that's the only thing you could do there is text. You can't send pictures, right. you can't uh, call, um, but I could text. Um, but I would be texting her. I'd get through this long text, and I'd realize that half of it was in Spanish, and I'd be like, no, English, English. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was the purpose of your trip? This was this wasn't just a tourist trip. It wasn't just a vacation. What was the reason for your trip? Well, in fact, Americans are not supposed to go there as tourists. You have to go there for some kind of right. project. Um, our project was um, a documentary. Well, I had several actually, but the main project between my son and I were we did a documentary on troubadours, which right. are street musicians, and we had no plan because we didn't know what it was going to be like. I'd, right. I had never met anybody that had ever been to Cuba, right. let alone done a project like this, so we had no contacts, so we went in blind. Um, Sometimes that's better, though. Well, Sometimes. and we met some amazing people because right. of it. Um, we got up the second day we were there, the, the first full day we were there, right. and um, my son got lost the first <laughs> night we were there. He went out on a walk, yeah. forgot to take his phone, right. forgot to take his map, and he got lost. And what do you do? I mean, I had no way to find him or contact him. It was just like, well, I hope yeah, he finds his way home. Back. He didn't even know the address of our house. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, gosh, he may be gone for days. Right. You know, I, I don't he know. always finds his way back, though. He he is amazing about that. He really is. Um, but Havana is a major city. It's, right. you know, one of their biggest cities. And it's big, like, you know, Atlanta or New York, you know, so it's a big city. And so he's walking around lost. But because of that, he knew where a lot of stuff was the next day. Right. Um, he finally found his way back that night about nine o'clock. <laughs> so um, so any, some of the musicians that you met up with were, were what? Um, well, the first day we went out, we um, met a musician in a bookstore. We were walking by. I think it was the first day. It might have been the second day. But we were we were walking by this bookstore, and we happened to look in, and we saw that they were having this little concert in the bookstore. And it was a gentleman and a lady. And so we just went in, and I just started videoing them. I didn't even ask them if I could. I just did it. I figured <laughs> I'd get permission after the fact. Um, but after it was over, um, I talked to him, and the gentleman's name is Julio Cumberbatch. Yes. And Julio was thrilled. He was absolutely thrilled. So we spent a lot of time with Julio. And as it turned out, 
Uh, Julio's wife is the director of a cultural center. Havana is divided up into sections, oh. and each section has a cultural center. And she was the director of this one particular one, which was the major sponsor or the major um, location for the jazz festival, the International Jazz Festival that was going on at the same time that we were there. So you walked into a gold mine. We did. Right there at the bookstore. So we had an opportunity to go to one of those concerts, which was filmed for television. I mean, there were musicians from all over the, the globe that came to play in Havana um, this April. Oh, wow. So we got to see some of that because she was the director. Right. So Now, with all this stuff you've done with this trip, you've gotten to come back home and now... You get to display that where? Oh, my other project? Uh -huh. uh, well, I had two others. Right. I have a blog, a travel blog that I do, and I'm also a photographer, so... Um, so between was, the filming and the photography and the blog. It was a lot of work, let me tell you. It was not a vacation, even though we had a great time. We right. had a lot of fun. Right. Um, but um, I took a lot of pictures, and next, this Friday, not today, but right. a week from today, on the 28th, uh, we're opening a show down at Village Lights, and the reception will be from 6 to 8. Um, and I'm, we've, I've am we got 11 photos out of hundreds. Um, he has limited space, so, right. you know, um, it's but probably they, a good thing because, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I like this one. Oh, I like this one. And um, But the pictures I chose, I hope, will give people an idea of life. In Havana, yeah. yeah. It has changed a little bit since they've... And it's changed, and I'm planning to go back. I need to go back probably two more times at least because um, I'm going to need follow-up footage because once I figure out what I've got, I'm going to find out that I've got a lot of holes um, in my right story. Well, you may want to tell more of the story even. It may not just be that you have a, a spot that needs to be filled, but you have... You're exactly. like, I want to tell more of the story. So. Well, and since then... Um, in my mind, some of the story has changed a bit because of some of the things that's happened, you know, with the regulations right. and, and stuff. Um, I'm hoping that um, this piece will make Cubans human to people that maybe feel a little... Um, I, I don't know. If people are really polarized about Cuba. It's like they either are like, oh, I'd really like to go there because they got old cars and the old buildings and all this stuff, and they're really excited about it. Right. Or they're like very, um, I, I right. wouldn't want to go there at all. I don't know why anybody would want to go there. But the people there are amazing. They're so friendly. They're so open, and, and um, they, they like Americans a lot. Um, I never felt, even one time, threatened. I never felt scared. I mean, this is a big city, and there's a lot of poverty there. And sometimes mm -hmm. you go to places where there's a lot of poverty. You have to be a, a little worried about your safety, but I right. never felt that way there. And I walked all over that city, day and night. And well, what was, the, what was the most unique thing you found out when you were there? That you didn't expect? What was the most unique thing that you didn't expect? Well, I don't know if it's the most unique thing, but I found it a little bizarre that the average Cuban doesn't eat seafood for their meals because they're an island. Oh, in the <laughs> that is, well, it is. I, mean, but, I wouldn't have thought that. No, uh, th their diet consists mainly of chicken and pork. Right. And I don't remember seeing a lot of pigs running around, but evidently they're... There must be. A well, you were in the big somewhere. city, so yeah. There must be well, out that doesn't somewhere. mean anything because uh, farmers come in and and they sell things on the sidewalk. You right. know, it's it's like going back to the early 1900s. Really, I mean, people think 1950s because of the cars, but really, their way of life is more um, like the early 1900s here in the United States. Where in um, cities, you have your butcher. Right. And the meat's hanging in the window, right. you know, and you could see it. And um, you go someplace else to get eggs. And in this case, usually it was just somebody with a bunch of eggs sitting out on the sidewalk, and they would sell you eggs. Right. And and every neighborhood had a produce market. It's kind of like our farmer's market. It was outside. And you could just walk there. Um Everything's neighborhood oriented still, unlike in America where you go to Walmart. Right. And I, 
and I don't know, I don't think they really realize how special that is because th they're seeing, like on television, they get a lot of television from Miami. So they're seeing all the shiny new stuff that we have in America, you know, and they're just like, wow, I wish I had that. Although, amazingly enough, a lot of people have smartphones over there. <laughs> I was surprised <laughs> about that. Um, but I told Yene, I said, you don't understand. Your food is so good. You, you're limited in your choices. Right. But what you have is, is so fresh and it's so pure because, you know, they don't have to worry about GMOs and and no processing uh, no they hardly have any process it's food. all fresh food yeah everybody makes their food fresh it's so healthy their fruit oh my gosh i didn't even know i like mangoes i've had them here before and i didn't particularly care for them but i had them she served us fruit every morning and usually there was mangoes they're so different when they're picked ripe yes they're, yeah. yeah not green but, and turn ripe it's yeah different they're amazing um and and they have all this stuff. I saw banana groves for the first time. I'd never seen banana groves before. <laughs> I'm like, what? I asked our, we had a regular taxi driver. He was a friend of Yane's, and he shuttled us around to distant places. And um, I said, Pedro, what what are those things? He says, oh, it's banana. <laughs> um, and so I got to see bananas growing and um, tried some Julio uh, made us a fruit tray one day when we were at his house, and um, there was I can't I wish I would remembered to look this up. There's this fruit, and when you cut it open, it looks kind of like an orangey or red avocado. It has a big pit in it, right? But it's shaped kind of like an avocado, but it's on the outside it's beige. I don't know, but it's really sweet and it's really good, right? Um, so they have some really neat things there that. We never see here. Oh, no. No. And well, what was your favorite thing while you were there? Uh, just getting to know people. You are uh, a people person. Yeah. That's, you, you're just a people person. So I, I figured mean, you'd have... Uh, we saw a lot of really amazing things. Uh, we didn't go to a lot of museums. We just really didn't have time. Right. Because we were too busy trying to do these projects. But we did go to Ernest Hemingway's house. And that was amazing. He lived a pretty nice life there, let me tell you. That house is beautiful and has beautiful views. You can see Havana. He right. had a he has a tower and he kept a telescope up on the, on that tower so he can look at the city. And um we um went to the beach. We went to Santa Maria Beach and that was probably the most beautiful beach I've ever been to. I've been to a lot of beaches. Um when I talked to the Madison Courier, uh, they said that I had been to every beach. No, that's a lot of beaches. I haven't been to every beach, but no. I've been to and beaches on both the West and East, East Coast, Coast and and um, in the Caribbean. And this was the be most beautiful beach I'd ever been to. The oh, water was just amazingly clear. Right. And there wasn't, you know how sometimes you go to the beach and you have seaweed y in yes. the bottom. You know, yes. you're wading through. Mm -hmm. None of that. It was just clean sand. And... Um, I don't know. It was, was there a lot of animal life there that you saw? Um, shells? And they have a lot of dogs. <laughs> it's like uh, Puerto Rico does, too. There's a lot of stray dogs. Um, so if you need to feel the need to adopt a dog, I don't know if you can adopt them from there <laughs> because they need some adoptions. Yeah. Uh, one of the pictures that didn't get included in the show, but that really kind of showed Havana life, and I'll send it to you. You can just put oh, it yeah. in the video. Yeah. Um, was um, we were in Cathedral Square, and there was this little black dog, and he wanted to play with these boys. These boys were playing soccer with a basketball. Right. And they're trying to run around and play soccer, and this dog thinks, "Oh, I'm going to join them," and he just keeps running in. And they're like, "Go away, go away!" But this one little boy, he was deaf. I knew that because he had a cochlear implant. Right. Um, he decided to play with the dog. So I took pictures of him playing with this dog with a balloon. And oh. those two had the best time. And it got to the point where people were just stopping to watch. It, it was almost like... Yeah. It was like entertainment. <laughs> but um, they, it's just, you see kids out playing. I saw a lot of basketballs used for soccer balls. Right. But I only saw one person using a basketball for basketball. basketball. Do they not have soccer balls there, or do they? It's the big, it's the big sport there, right. and so they have a hard time getting the balls. Oh, I see. And so they just use whatever right. they have. So it, I would recommend that if 
someone is going to Havana or to any of the Cuban cities, um, get some soccer balls. You can deflate them, bring a little pump with you, right. and just you know give them to the kids. They'll love it. Um, I took Hot Wheel cars and gave them to Yenny's son. He's 10. And he was like over the top. He wanted to buy more, and I didn't have any more. Um, but right. he's like, "Can I? Can I buy some more of those?" And I'm like, "Well, I would give them to you, but I don't have any more." But that was so, that was fun for him to have yeah. that, though. But things that we take for granted, um, they don't have them. Um, you know, things like peanut butter. Right. I brought a jar of peanut butter and gave it to him. Well, I actually brought a lot of snacks because I didn't know. What you were going to be provided with. Exactly. So you want to make so sure you we, get something. My whole roller bag that we checked was full of full-size products, you know, shampoo. Right. And when we left, we just left everything with the family. Right. And they were thrilled. But we didn't even open that peanut butter. And and uh, Anival, that's her son, he opened it and he smelled it. And his eyes just lit up. He's like, ooh, I, I don't think I'm going to like this, you know. And he and I found out he really loves Dunkin' Sticks. <laughs> We took some of them because my son is a big donut person. Right. And uh, that was real popular with him, those Duncan Oh, my sticks. goodness. So, and you still stay in contact with this family. I do. Since you've been back. Uh, we email back and forth. And um, Yene's daughter-in-law, Yanada, she, she's on Facebook, so she messaged. She used to message me every day, but her, um, um, Yene's older son, who she's with, um, has come home, so I think she's a little more busy now. She, <laughs> so she I don't things, hear from her as much. Other things to do besides texting, and yeah. well, that's great though. But but that's your personality. When you meet somebody, you they're your friend forever. You you're one of those people that just continue to talk to them. So I think that's really cool. So you're going to schedule two more trips back. Well, I'm hoping. Do you know? Well, they have some needs that right. I would like to help them with. Um, Yene's husband is a doctor, but I don't know if you know this. Doctors don't make a lot of money there. Right. They work for the government. The average Cuban that works for the government makes like $60 a month. Can you imagine living on $60 a no. month no. in 2017? <laughs> um, so he um, goes to Africa to teach in a medical, medical school because he can make a little more money right. by doing that. So he's gone a lot, and then they run the homestay. Um, but... Even if you have money, sometimes it's hard to find the things that you need. Like she had some some over the counter medicines that she needs that she's had a hard time getting. Um, you know, I got like more Hot Wheels, right, Hot Wheels, <laughs> and a, or an aspirin even. Yeah, in I, some countries that's even hard to get a hold of. Yeah, um, when we left, we left them a whole bunch of over the counter medicines, and I had to explain what they were all for. And I know her husband will know, but. Um, yeah, uh, there are some things that she I know that she specifically needs that I want to take back to her. And there's a company yes. called Cuba Pack that, but I'm not sure. I've never sent anything. I don't know anybody that's ever sent anything that way. So I'm not sure how reliable they are. So I'm a little nervous about packing up a bunch of stuff and sending it through them and or through the mail or any any. Well, you can't mail it. You have to send it through somebody a special to, company. Yeah, and I'm afraid I. You know, I may this may be totally unfounded, but I don't think so. I'm I'm afraid that um, once it's out of sight, that it'll get picked through, and by the time it gets to them, there won't be anything in it, oh. or they'll charge them a bunch of money to to pick it up. But that also gives you another reason to go back. Yeah, so. um, I think um, I'm hoping to be able to go back before the the end, before Christmas, so I can take these things to her and maybe. Um, we're hoping to have Julio and his wife, Tomasa, come to Indiana. Oh, wow. Um, that would be nice. I'm working with some people at the college to try to figure out how to do that. Right. I'm not sure how um, the new regulations or the change in For the regulations to be able is going to come over here. Yeah. So um, that needs to be, all be worked out. But we're hoping they could come because um, they can... Um, talk to so many different students, you right. know, Spanish students, uh, art students, music students, you know, you name it. There's there's a lot there's of There's always things. something to learn from somebody from another country. Exactly. And if they come, I'm hoping that Julio will do a concert somewhere here in town, too. He's, he's a really amazing um, musician. Right. He um, 
oh, what is it he plays? A uh, bolero right? musician. And um, he has this one song. Um, it's going to be in my documentary, but um, he sang it for me. And even though my Spanish is a little iffy sometimes, it was like, even not knowing what he was saying, it's just like, oh, my gosh. He's, the melody was great. The, he, he just, the emotion. And he was so excited about Tyler's music. Right. Uh, Tyler played some songs for him, and he was so excited. He videoed him, and he went and showed all his friends. <laughs> so um, it's kind of neat to make those connections. It is. It always is. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to go. That's just awesome. So now when you when you do your display down here at the mm -hmm. Village Book Lighthouse, you're just going to have 11 photos that are mm -hmm. out of who knows how many. And then about uh, 800. <laughs> now, how long does that display sit there? Is it just that one night, or is it going to sit there for a while? Um, people can go in. It'll be up until September 22nd. Oh, that's a good. So it's like two months. Yes, so you have plenty of time to go and see it. It's upstairs right. now. They used to be in um, the um, the Mark Twain room, right? But he's moved the gallery upstairs. A lot of people don't even know there is an upstairs. They think it's their living quarters. And yes. I think maybe some of their living quarters might be up there, but right. they also sell books from up there. So mm -hmm. we'll have a little reception. There'll be refreshments. So, you know, even if you don't care about pictures, <laughs> um, come well, up the and story, say hi. The story about being in Havana is still kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, even, even if they don't go see the photos, they need to come and hear what, what you saw and what you found, and that's kind of cool. So give them one more time, the date and the time and the place. So that we make sure we've got um, it. It's um, July July 28th uh, from 6 to 8 at Village Lights Bookstore upstairs. And that's Fourth Friday, so there's a lot of things open downtown. So come down and have dinner and come up and see the pictures and say hello. <laughs> and, and also, if you want to hear more about this trip, um, you can go to my my website is www.destinationinvestigations.com, and there's a whole series of stories with some pictures. Oh, that's great. So. Now, if they don't make it, they can always go to that page and, and well, look at it. Well, I don't think any of the pictures that are in the well, that probably won't will be, be. They're not no, on the blog because I saved them back <laughs> yes. for this specific. And these pictures that are going to be on display down there will be for sale. Oh, so that's If somebody cool. likes a particular one, they want right. to hang it in their house, they can, yeah. you know, they can buy it. Well, you never know. A lot of times people do want them. They, yeah. they really like the way they look and things. So that's awesome. So now we can just plan on visiting the Village Book Lighthouse and see you um, Friday. Now, there's going to be that's, – that's really kind of cool because you can either go see her on Friday – and see all the books and everything, and then come here for our open house, or you can come here for open house and then go down there and see her. So there'll be a lot I know, I on. saw I was, that you were having your open house. I know. I'm, like, I'm like, how am I supposed to go to that when I'm trying to do this? <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. I'm trying to think, okay, I'll just go down there before four and see your thing, and then I'll come here and just. I'll hang out, and if you make it, you make it. Yeah. So. Well, I was thinking, I was thinking the same thing. I'll, I'll go down there before my. Um, so it'll be funny because right. you'll be at my thing and I'll be at your thing and neither one of us will be at the same place. <laughs> well, maybe we can figure, maybe we can do it at three o'clock. I can be at yours at three o'clock, then you can come down here with me, and then you can head back down there. So that'll be cool. That'll so be yeah. Awesome. Well, that's great. Well, just make sure you remember on Friday, there's a lot to do. And uh, if you can make it out and hear a story about Havana, that'd be great. And if you can make it to our open house, that would be great, too. So we hope to see you then. And as always, we thank you for watching. <laughs>